Disney just why? In 1996, Disney was doing pretty good. They had highly successful animated films out, and they just released the second of their Mighty Ducks trilogy, about an underdog hockey team making it big. Personally, I felt it was a ripoff of the Bad News Bears, but that's beside the point. Now, in order to keep interest up until they were ready to release the third film, they decided to do an animated series. Not quite the way you would imagine them to. They took the concept of hockey and the name Ducks and decided to make today's show. A show which is somewhat mixed in the regards fans have for it. Personally, I'm not exactly a fan, so in this occasion, every time there's a cheap, lazy bit of writing or a stupid 90s cliche or just something that makes your head spin, take a shot. In fact, let's take one for the road. <sighs> gentle Folk, animated Gentle Folk, and Extra Dimensional Waterfowl, Disney's The Mighty Ducks. Our story opens in Anaheim, California where the local team, the Mighty Ducks, are a tad unusual in that they're actual ducks. Human-sized waterfowl who play hockey and who the fans love because they're humanoid ducks who play hockey. I mean, it's California. Well, what else are you going to do? However, uh, Detective Cleghorn of the local police is not happy about this unusual situation, so he goes to their manager, Phil Palmfeather. And this is going to have a lot of really, really bad puns in it, so take a shot. Phil is, <clears throat> excuse me, Phil is more interested in the fact that the ducks are making lots of money, but Inspector Claytorn insists that he be told the whole story. And unfortunately, that means we have to hear it too. Six hockey playing ducks appear out of nowhere, and suddenly six vigilantes in comic book getup start showing up whenever there's trouble. Spill it, where are they from? Another planet? Not another planet, babe. A whole nother universe. And in this universe is a planet inhabited entirely by ducks. They called it Puckworth, in honor of their greatest hero, the legendary hockey player, Drake Duquesne. He was the ultimate team captain. He saved Puckworth from a horde of conquering aliens called the Saurian Overlords hundreds of years ago. But nobody knew for sure whether or not Drake Duquesne ever really existed. And they argue about it to this day. Drake Duquesne? He totally ruled Canard. The Saurian Overlords had conquered everything. I mean, it was game over for the whole universe, man. Ugh, and nobody could find him because they had, like, these evil magic powers. Drake Duquesne invents this crazy mask, a goalie mask, that can see through their invisible shields. So he hunts down the evil Saurians with the mask, right? He kicks their scaly tails clear into another dimension, and the crowd goes, Whoa! Yeah! The Ducks honor their ancient champion by playing hockey, presumably year round. Industry, science, technology, it doesn't matter. No, the most important thing is hockey. Take a shot. We're in range of Puck World, Lord Dragonis. Descendants of Drake Duquesne shall pay for what 
what he did to my ancestors. <laughs> you ever had duck before, Chameleon? Ah, uh, yes, Siege? You ask whether I have partaken of a duck feast? Well, uh, now that you mention it, no. I hear it tastes like chicken. If we do not use the dark powers of our ancestors, I predict a dismal outcome. This conversation is closed, Wraith! Technology freed us from that dimensional limbo with my new gateway generator. And technology will crush Puck World flat! So that's our group of villains. The overbearing but secretly incompetent leader and his gaggle of cliched sidekicks. Take a shot. It's hopeless. We don't stand a chance. Oh, Cunard, where have you been all these months? I'm with what's left of the military, in the resistance. The resistance? It really exists? I'm organizing a team of our best special forces and a few civilians we've had our eyes on, like you. We're gonna take out Dragonis. How? Nobody's ever seen him. I found it, Wild Wing. In an ancient tomb in the mountains, they call Twin Beaks. The Mask. Drake Duquesne's Mask. Oh, didn't I tell you, man? Was Drake Duquesne the main doctor or what? Beat it, kid, before you get us all into trouble. No. If you want me, then my brother's part of the deal. Okay, but you're responsible for the kid's safety. All right, bro! This smacks of a serious part t t t Canard was the team captain. Now all he needed was a team. He started assembling a crack strike force to face off against Dragonis. First up was Mallory, a top flight commando and weapon specialist. I hate machines. Next was Duke Glarange, the most notorious jewel thief on Puck World. But ever since Dragonis hit town, he has been putting his skills to good use. This food belongs to the people, not that tyrant, Dragonis. Then there was Tanya, an expert in science and, you know, technical stuff. She was so good, she actually knew how to set a timer in a VCR. <laughs> Scratch one oversized toaster of it. And the last member of the team was a guy named Grin. Huh. He was so strong, he could been steel just by looking at him. Pain is an illusion. An illusion that really, really hurts. Kennard had his strike force. Five commandos and one kid brother. The Master Tower has an invisibility field around it. Dragonis is cloak of darkness. And we're about to pass through it. Goddess's headquarters! And there's our group of uh, seven. We got the demolitions experts, we got the fighter, we got the big guy, the second in command lancer, the hero character, and the psychic. Or the comic relief sidekick. That's more cliches. And that's another shot. Grin, you're on. Mind over metal. <laughs> the master computer. Yeah, I saw this place on the cover of Better Homes and Super Villains. Tanya, take Mallory and shut it down. Tanya, I gotta warn you. Machines and me don't get along too well. Canard, these guys all have special skills, but what am I doing here? You're gonna draw Dragonis out so we can jump him. Why me? Because you're the best goalie I know. You'll be able to take anything Dragonis can throw at you. Did I mention I'm half chicken? There, the door to Dragonis' command chamber. We'll be right behind you, buddy. We'll give him a 30 second start, then we... Well, so much for your plan, Kanad. All right, let's pluck some stuff! 
better idea, Siege. Let's roast them. <laughs> oh boy, it got his attention. How disappointed. I was hoping it would be the best canard. He's been causing me trouble for months. Uh, guys, you're supposed to be right <laughs> Your feathered friends aren't coming. Nothing can save you. Dragonis had Wild Wing prisoner, and he was in a mood to terminate with extreme prejudice. When you hit those rays, you'll be incinerated. <laughs> I've always had a passion for crispy duck. I don't suppose I could interest you in a nice pasta salad instead, huh? dog team is in big trouble from the bad guys and they're all messing up on their own ways <laughs> that's a shot stand still you shape-shifting sicko <laughs> kids go up so fast these days Well, it has to do some 
sort of matter. We're gonna have the jettison something. But like what? Everything is falling down. <laughs> I'm gonna close that thing down! Are you crazy? It's the only way! Take it, Wild Wing! Take it! Hang on! Hang on! Take it! Your team captain now! No! So, the hero of the team. Obviously was destined to die since there's only six ducks on the team and he was number seven. Does that? Heroic sacrifice time, yeah. And he passes on the magical MacGuffin because that's what he does to do before he dies. <laughs> that's a shot! Oh no, they must have passed through the other end of the gateway! where we're going. Punch it, nose dive. Ah, where's the raptor? More to the point, where are we? <laughs> 